This over here is the Asus ProArt Studiobook 16 and I have been using this for the last nine months. I have 11 good sides that I'd like to mention and six bad sides that I also have to mention. And if you're thinking about buying this, this is probably one of the most useful videos that you're gonna want to watch. So let's get right to it. This video is sponsored by Motion Array. Check them out in the video description below or learn more later on in this video. Now, firstly, if you want to check out my actual overview and a little bit of an unboxing of this, uh, go check it out because I'll go a little bit more in detail in some of the bench benchmarks and how good this is in there, worth checking out. But now this is just me talking about basically the good sides and the bad sides. But firstly, I want to talk about the specs of this because there's a few different versions of this out there. You can get the 3D model version where like the screen is gonna be 3D, something like that. Then you've got the RTX ADA GPU version where you've got the you know professional GPU and then the RTX GPU, which I have here. And the RTX GPU versions, there's also a 30 or 4060 version out there, but I have the 4070 version. So this has the i9 139 80HX CPU, which is a 24 core CPU. It's like the most powerful CPU you can have on a laptop. I think now there might be a 14th gen available as well. It's not gonna be much better. And then I have RTX 4070 mobile. So it's pretty much maxed out. I also upgraded the RAM to 64 gigabytes. If you wanna know how to do that, it's super simple. Go check out that video as well. And I have added an extra M.2 SSD in there, which it does have a just empty slot there, which you can do, which leads me to the first good side which is the upgradability now there are not a lot of laptops out there that just allow you to just upgrade if you upgrade for example often you have to kind of take all the old ram sticks out and then just install the new ones and the old ones kind of become useless in this one you just have upgradability options where you just add an extra m.2 ssd for example or extra ram voila that's there so future Larry here talking about the ssd upgrades uh, here's a, another few little tips if you're thinking about doing this it's very easy because you have a spare slot in there you can just slot in the secondary ssd so you might be asking okay what are some of the good ssds that you know i can go for honestly pick whichever one you want but i've seen that the samsung 9 90 pro for example is a very very good option that performs very very solidly and as you've seen some of my performance benchmarks for this ssd it performs very very well so if you're a creator who wants secondary ssd that's very very fast this has dram as well which is very important you could also um cheap out a little bit on the 980 pro if you wanted to to check the pricing i'll leave them both in the description below but these are like some solid options for a secondary drive now the 990 pro also has a four terabyte version and they're like the best that you can get for gen 4 also right now it looks like there's deals on so you can get these even cheaper another tip that i recommend you to do is when you plug in this and and when you're actually installing this you need a little screw for the m.2 drive so you might want to pick uh, up something online to actually get one for yourself as well because the laptop doesn't have it at least mine didn't have it so you need one of the m.2 screws and another thing you need is a little thermal pad so these go for only a few dollars on amazon i'm going to leave some links in the description below but you need a one millimeter thermal pad that you want to put on top here making sure that the controller gets covered, which is on that side, which is in the front there. As you can see on the Samsung, that little silver, there is the controller. And then we've got the NAND actual on, on the back of it. But the controller is the one that you want to get cooled down because that is actually going to make contact with the back plate, as you can see. And that's going to cool it down. If you don't have the thermal pad, you might have actual overheating of your SSD. So highly recommend getting these two links in the description below. Now, the first thing that you notice about this laptop when you're using this is the display. The display is absolutely amazing, absolutely gorgeous. The aspect ratio, the colors, the, the touchscreen features, everything is just fantastic. Like I have literally not a single bad thing to say about this. The brightness, everything just worked great. And in fact, I think when it comes to laptops, this is the best screen that i have experienced on a laptop there there isn't any better ones i've tried the macbook pros the m3 max one that costs like twice the price as this pretty much i'd say easily this is better just because when you've used oled 
it's a whole nother world plus touchscreen you're gonna enjoy this and it's very color accurate so for creators when you're actually working with content that's a big upside and then the touchscreen feature of the screen now you might think you don't need the screen to be touch screen but actually when you're in a creator workflows i have found myself actually using this a little bit in there as well like when zooming in something like that it's very easy to just use your hands to reach out onto the screen and zoom in or something like that clicking around it's very helpful most of the time what i found this very helpful is when i've had to do some kind of business you know filling out forms or doing some payrolls or something like that online and you're clicking through different columns and you have to like you know usually you use your mouse and then go to the next kind of box and then type something in there and the next box there and creating invoices when you've got a touch screen it's so much faster when you just touch the screen that box type in that box type in you're gonna get used to it and you realize it's actually faster with touch screen i'd love to know your experience as well then the touchpad this is 16 by 9 aspect ratio i know 16 by 10 actually so this is actual mimic of the screen and this is haptic touchpad if you don't know what that is it's basically there is no actual physical kind of hinges how this gets put on so when you press on it there's going to be like a electrical kind of little feedback on it that makes you feel like it. it's very similar to what you feel on the um, macbooks or macbook pros this is pretty much as good as it gets on windows laptop and i've got absolutely no issues with this i like it very much it's big large next is the ir sensor and windows hello now if you haven't used windows hello before this is a super nice feature you're going to open the laptop, it's going to scan your face, boom, you're logged in. And it's not going to be like MacBooks where you have to touch something or type in a ping or something like that. This just really adds like a tiny little bit extra. Now, this is not something special, but because this laptop does have it and I've used laptops that don't have it. And when you realize the laptops that don't have it, this feels like, like kind of limping and it's not fully like using the laptop. But having that is really going to just make the usability and using this much faster then moving on to the ports of this laptop now when you get this laptop you realize you don't need to bring in any extra dongles you can use everything that you need is in here whether it's hdmi rj45 port lan port that's not very common on laptops but it's in here now this is only one gigabits in speed so that's kind of like mm, a little bit of a downside i think this great laptop this should have been 2.5 at least just because Creator would just connect this to their NAS and they want to get fast transfer speeds with their network attached storage. But this one doesn't quite support that. So that one gigabit one, it's kind of a bit of a shame. We do have an SD card slot, USB type A's and type C's, Thunderbolts, everything. Honestly, you don't need anything else when having this laptop on the go. It really feels like a workstation where everything's there. Which leads me to the performance of this laptop. Now, the CPU and GPU combo inside there is truly really, really powerful. And especially the CPU, if you ever need to do something CPU intensive, those 24 cores, they are truly amazing. And I've talked about CPU performance a lot on the channel, but basically hybrid architecture and everything. If you're using any Adobe products, for example, especially Premiere Pro, using media encoder while editing at the same time it's an absolute breeze and you're gonna you're gonna enjoy this it's very very powerful the gpu as well it's very powerful on the go to have that on a laptop 40 70 40 series nvidia a quick message from today's video sponsor motion array motion array is an unlimited marketplace for all your video needs you know the ones that you don't have time to make but would love to use all the nice titles and intros and lower third effects and motion graphics even stock video video and photo. There are over 40 plugins available for Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, After Effects, Final Cut Pro, Motion, Vegas Pro and Arvid Media Composer. It's membership based, one fee and unlimited downloads. Use whenever and whatever. No more copyright strikes and a peace of mind. Their website is extremely easy to use. You'll find exactly what you're looking for. Try it out and you'll know what I'm talking about. But now they even have extensions available for Adobe software. So get all the assets within the software without even leaving your editor. If you're not sure about Motion Array, check out their hundreds of free assets through the links in the description below. And if you sign up for the annual plan, the links down below will provide you extra $50 discount so go check out motion array through the links in the description below 
Thank you again, Motion Array, for sponsoring this video. Then we've got to talk about the price, which is also something that is very, very impressive. Now, try to find the laptop out there that goes for around $2,400 and has the same features for creators. An awesome screen, quite a lot of power in all of the CPU, GPU performance, upgradability, all the chassis, Asus style, all the things in considered, you're not gonna find another laptop. And this is made for creators as well. Beautiful design, everything. The price is amazing. Now, if you're using Adobe products, you're also gonna get three months for free Adobe Creative Cloud membership, which makes this laptop even more affordable. So I highly recommend checking it out in the video description below if you wanna pick it out. I'll leave links in there so you can check it out. I've also seen this on a deal recently where there's been a few hundred dollars off on this as well, which makes me think this is absolutely insane as well. And now I'm hoping Asus is gonna maybe come out with a newer version of the Pro Art, which makes this even more affordable. So I'll try to leave the links in the description description below for you to check out. Then I've used the laptop to watch quite a bit of movies as well and this is another bit where you realize that the screen is awesome but also the speakers are quite awesome especially when you know you're watching something in the nighttime and you need to quiet down you put the speakers very very low because the speakers are very powerful and loud so i'm very much happy with the speakers you've got harmon and card and sound in there as well as dolby atmos what now would i recommend you doing editing on the speakers you definitely can but i think having headphones is going to give you a better experience just because it's not going to be as echoey and you can do some better sound design last awesome thing about this is the build quality there is not a lot of Windows laptops that have this type of quality. All the chassis feels very, very solid. The top is absolutely metal. And when the laptop lid closes, it makes very similar sound to the MacBook Pros. Listen to this. If you know what MacBook Pros sound like, this is awesome. It's very, very solid. The hinges, there's no screen flex. It is such a rigid, like I can't bend it at all. It, the whole thing bends left and right. This is very, very strong. The design and build quality really truly feels like a professional laptop it's no plastic it is it's just solid i like it a lot i've actually dropped some kind of metal thing on this part i'm not sure if you can see this here there's a little chip in there and you can see a little silver aluminium um that's underneath this coating so that's a little bit of a shame but at least you can see that it's been used now Let's talk about some of the downsides that I've experienced in the last nine months. Number one thing that I need to mention is the bricking issue that's actually been solved. So this is not an issue anymore, but you might have heard about it because I did make videos about it. There was an issue about this laptop, uh, I don't know, six months ago, maybe more, where they updated the firmware through Windows Update of the actual you know, BIOS. And through that, the laptop actually got bricked now they updated that and that doesn't happen anymore and i figured out how to actually fix it so if you have that issue or if you're still experiencing something like that you can check it out my live stream about that there was an issue about that now it's fixed then about charging um th there's no particular order in all of the downsides here just what i remembered is when you're charging the laptop it gets very hot even if your laptop is not on so when your laptop is not on you've got the lid closed you plug the laptop in thinking okay i'll just leave it charging so when I need to go, I'm going to unplug it and then go somewhere and it's charged up. When you actually pick up the laptop, the laptop is so, so hot, especially on the bottom there. It is red hot. When you open the laptop lid, the fans are going to kick in 100% speed to cool the laptop instantly down, which means that instantly your battery is just going to be draining down. I think there's some kind of issue with the fans, that the fans are not kicking in when the laptop is charging with the lid closed or when the laptop is off. So when the laptop is off, I wish that the fans would still cool the laptop because obviously the 240 watt brake that charges it, it's going to make all the chassis and everything inside hot. But... Asus should update some kind of BIOS firmware that when it is charging, it would actually cool it down as well because you're obviously not wasting battery power, but then as soon as you start using it, your battery is going to drop very quickly because it's going to have to run the fans at 100% speed and your performance is going to be dipped as well because it is so hot, it's instantly thermal throttling because everything's heated up already. It is very, very warm. I mean, like, whoa, that is very warm. 
It's not just, okay, it's slightly warm. It's like hot, not just warm. Which leads me to the next bit, which is the battery life. This is a very, very powerful laptop. And in order to get that power, the battery runs out very, very fast. If you're trying to do any editing or any like high CPU, GPU intensive thing, don't expect more than two-ish, maybe three hours out of it. That's absolute maximum. You're not going to get any anything else. Even when doing just using the laptop, a couple of hours is the absolute maximum that I have seen this laptop battery life. It goes down very, very quickly. Now, I've actually gone even further to put the laptop into a power efficiency mode when I'm doing just emails and, you know, just working on a laptop and I don't need the laptop to be just super powerful and all the 24 cores you know roaring away uh, I just want it to kind of serve battery but it's not going to do a great job honestly it's meant to be kind of on the go and keep the power brick with you type of laptop yes you can do some things on the go and I've used quite a bit of doing emails and watching movies and so on but honestly you're going to be surprised how fast it's going to run dry which makes me think that uh, they need to do the mux switch a little bit better like when you're going to use the dedicated graphics card and when you're not going to use the dedicated graphics card i don't think the software inside there chooses it very well so it uses the dedicated graphics card when it actually doesn't have to and even the cpu cores we don't have to use the 24 cores all the time I think there could be a little bit of a better scheduling and using the cores and the laptop a bit more efficiently. It just uses a lot of power, even though it's got a massive battery, like a 90 watt hour powered battery, which is very close to the maximum that you can actually carry on an airplane. It's still not going to be big enough to power this as long as you need. While we're talking about the, the performance of this, even though the performance is awesome in CPU, the GPU as well, I feel like this laptop should have had an option for more than RTX 4070. Now this 4070 has eight gigabytes of VRAM, but I feel like creators, we should have been given like the 4070 Ti or TI Super now, I know Supers weren't available then, or 4080, where we have a bit more VRAM and we have dual encoders. Like, these two things are very, very important for creators. And I feel like they cheaped out a little bit on the GPU. And I know there's power delivery and there's a lot more things, you know, to it when creating a laptop like that. But I wish there was another option where we get a 4080, for example, as well, just for that extra VRAM. Now, even when you go with the RTX ADA, the professional series GPUs, you're not going to be able to get any more VRAM. 8 gigabytes, that's it. That's the maximum. But I feel creative professionals, we need a little bit more. And that's a little bit of a shame. Then the Asus dial that we have in here. Now, this is an awesome feature and I've praised this from the beginning, but there is a little bit of a downside. This is not as integrated into this laptop as you might think. I thought I was going to use this uh, much more than I thought, uh, but I didn't. Because often I found in Adobe, you know, softwares, maybe this is for you as well. This just didn't do anything and I couldn't figure out how to get it working. Maybe it worked at some point, but I feel like there's a pure software implementation for this Asus style. I like that it's physical. It feels very, very good, but just for software the experiences it hasn't worked as well it's pretty much done nothing i've just used any other features but not this uh, dial maybe there's a lot of configuration that you need to do to get it working but i feel like if you're providing this for creative professionals this should have been done from the get-go and i shouldn't be figuring out how to use this it should work out of the box which for me it didn't really do if you're using this laptop i'd love to know what your experience has been like then the keyboard now the keyboard is good, you know, it works, but uh, since I've used quite a few different keyboards and I'm using the Logitech MX keys, my daily driver and keyboard, and I absolutely love this. I've praised this to high heavens. I'm not a big fan of um, mechanical keyboards, but this is very nice the way this keyboard kind of goes. You've got a little bit of a weight and soft touch for this. These feel a little bit too light and too clicky and too like kind of flimsy. The key cabs kind of go around. They whittle around like that when you click the keypads and it just doesn't feel like a premium experience. I don't think this would have been expensive to implement something like that. And even if you're looking at the Asus ZenBook Duo 24, that tiny little skinny keyboard here, that feels so much better than this ProArt Studio Book here. This laptop there, the ZenBook Duo, is like a thousand dollars cheaper, but has a much better keyboard and look 
this is a much skinnier implementation than this so we don't need like a lot of key travel we just need a nicer this feels so much better than this one so I don't know, I just don't like the keyboard as much now. And when buying this laptop, another downside is the weight and size. Now, I know that you're gonna get a 16 inch laptop and when you're getting this, it's gonna be big and you know powerful and bulky. Now, I did have experience with the M3 Max as well when I use this one and the M3 Max didn't feel as bulky and as big. I know the whole thing about Apple laptops is that it, they, you know, they're very portable and light but this laptop does feel a little bit bulky. Some of the things is the design. I don't like that the back of this is empty. I know it feels like it's gonna make the laptop smaller. Just give me the extra little bit here, put like a heat, bigger heat sink or something in the back there because it would have made the laptop a little bit more kind of just unified. It is quite heavy to carry around, so it's not light. So it does feel like a workstation laptop that you're gonna take with you and then just gonna get some work done, if you know what I mean. If you're just expecting a thin light thing to do, you know, emails with, this is going to be a very heavy laptop to carry around and there's much better options to carry around if you just want to do email so maybe not that's not for you but this is not necessarily a downside this is just kind of like an observation that i've noticed when i was using this that you know perhaps if you just want to do that it's not the best laptop for that and lastly this is the sd card reader now even though Asus advertises this as this, this is like some extra SD Card Express 7.0 or something like that, I've actually been quite disappointed with this. And I'm not sure if this is just my model, but it hasn't been working as well. Now, if I've used some of my V90 cards from Lexar that should be reading 300 plus megabytes per second on the card, when reading the card, I've only got about 70, 80 to 100 megabytes. If I'm putting this to a different card reader, I can get 30, 300 megabytes plus so I haven't got the full speed of this card, but that's not been always. Sometimes it does work, but I haven't figured out why it doesn't sometimes. And this makes me very curious, and I'd love to know if you've had similar experience with the SD card reader, that it hasn't always worked as well. In conclusion, do I recommend this laptop? Is it still worth buying nine months later? And I'd say yes, even though I've mentioned these downsides, this is still my favorite that you can buy because of the price point, you're not gonna get much better. The main things that matter to you, like the screen and the power of the laptop, this does provide this. And I think this laptop is gonna last a long time if you're gonna buy it just because of the build quality and what Asus with ProArt is doing. So I'm loving this, even though with the downsides, it's worth buying. If you do wanna buy it, there's some links in the description below. Or if you do wanna build the PC for you, any budget you want, and you don't need the portability, there's some build guides in the description below that are for free. And if you do want to reach out to me um, and perhaps I've not answered your email or DM, then I always get back to all my Minect messages. So if you do want to reach out in there, feel free to check it out in the description below. I want to say big thank you to Motion Array for sponsoring this video. Go check them out through the links in the description below. They've got an awesome product, awesome service, affordable prices, and honestly, just go check them out. And if you sign up through the links through the description below, there is an extra $50 discount for those annual subscription plans. Go check them out.